In the summer of 2015, the levelised cost of electricity from renewables fell below that of coal, uh, meaning that for the first time in history, it was cheaper to make a kilowatt hour of electricity with the sun's rays than from any other means. For anyone that was interested in the future of our planet, which is presumably most people, this crossover moment was potentially a huge deal. And yet, since 2015, electricity prices have only got more expensive. It's become not only more expensive, it's become higher in CO2 and increasingly insecure. And we've had rolling blackouts in places like California and Texas, and we have a correlation between the use of variable renewable energy and high costs. Um, with Germany, the poster boy for renewables, amongst the worst placed, um, we have grid engineers talking with despair about things like the duck curve. So why is it that cheap solar photovoltaics and wind aren't translating into cheaper and more resilient grids, but rather the opposite? Why can't we integrate solar and wind into our grid systems effectively? And what are we going to do about it? My name is Gemma Green, and I'm a co-founder and the chairman of PowerLedger, a company dedicated to making renewables work for the grid. We were founded in 2016, just after the crossover point I told you about. We are essentially a software company using blockchain to solve this problem. We've got 35 employees, primarily from Perth, but also in the US, Europe and Asia, and we have more than 20 clients in nine countries who we're helping to solve this and related problems around renewables. At root, we see it as a market problem. If you go back to the good old days when energy came without carbon dioxide price tags attached, electricity was pumped out by steady baseload generation of coal, gas or nuclear. Small adjustments in the quantity of output were made and wholesale and retail could just adjust prices every quarter. If that put, off, um, if that put people off electricity, they could turn on gas so the system was a kind, in a kind of stability. But when the era of climate awareness arrived, things started to change. Um, suddenly, you've got a variable input of supply um, which needs to be balanced, and the wholesale price started to vary wildly. The retailer had to absorb it, and it turns out it puts up the average price of electricity. The consumer's response to price fluctuations has never been fast enough to help stabilise the system, so the system exhibits increasingly expensive electricity and decreasing stability. The answer, many people now believe, is a reconfiguration of the grid and with it the wholesale, the whole electricity market. Um, what that will do is make every home um, a wonderful prosumer and effectively at the mercy of and in command of the opportunity to arbitrage the hourly fluctuations in price of electricity. A stable future requires a different configuration of many of the elements in the electricity system. It's predicated on a rapidly changing price, one that sometimes even goes into negative Prosumers provide for themselves and each other and to some extent the wider grid network. Arbitrage opportunities in terms of the price delta in time and space can be exploited by investing in electric vehicles and batteries. Suddenly the very instability of the, the source of the very instability of the system is key to encouraging people to stabilize it. What does the transition of this new de decentralized system require? It needs a new agile way of paying for electricity so people are free to let the fluctuations build and shape the new system. That's what we've produced, and we're looking for partners to help us deliver on that vision. Thank you.